Hello there, YouTube. It is I, it is I, Paul Murphy, I think. Am I Paul Murphy? Yes, I've had confirmation. <laughs> I've had lots of confirmation in my time. <laughs> Still got the stands to prove it. Where am I to here? <laughs> right, yes, it's me, and I'm going to be reading some clips from my book. I can never tell which way the cover is on this. Anyway, well, the cover's on the front. Uh, and it is called Paul Murphy's Extremely Unlikely History of the United Kingdom, and uh, there's various clips of this dotted all over the internet, all over my YouTube channel, and I'm just about to add an extra dot to that lot. <laughs> I'm just picking pages at random, and uh, if you want to read along, you'd need to go to Amazon first and buy a copy. I'd be very grateful. So would my children, who get all the royalties. Um, I'm on page 39, but not for much longer. King John of England is said to have lost his crown jewel. <laughs> I'm chuckling because I've just remembered how this chapter goes. King <laughs> I'm so sorry. King John of England is said to have lost his crown jewels at the Wash on the northwest corner of East Anglia in 1216. However, some scholars contend that what actually happened was that he lost his crown jewels in the wash when Queen Isabella forgot to turn his pockets out before shoving them in the washing machine. The washing machine, a.k.a. house maiden Miss Juliet Winge. Some others maintain that King John was washing his crown jewels on a corner in East Anglia and got put on a register for it. <laughs> <laughs> Further scholars have suggested that the more likely option was to pay off his huge war debts. The crown jewels were lost in cash generator. You can have to imagine the next bits in two different voices. I'm not going to do voices. Uh, well, I'll try. Uh, hello, I'd like to claim on my contents insurance, please. For what? I've lost some jewellery. Estimated value? Uh, 20 zillion, gazillion, billion, trillion, willion groats. Are you a farmer? No, I'm a king. In fact, capitalise that. I'm a king. Then why are you claiming for so many goats? Not goats. Groats. It's a unit of currency. I thought that was an ampere. Not until Thomas Edison gets here. And what's his son going to do? Whose son? This Thomas Eddy. Is he a farmer? No, no, no. Look, we're getting off track. I need you to reimburse me for my lost jewellery. I bought extra travel insurance, especially for the journey, uh, <clears throat> yeah, just in case. Well, where did you get this jewellery? It was handed down to me. Second hand, eh? That's decrease of value. Who handed it down to you? Uh, King Henry II. Talk amongst yourselves, I've got the pages stuck. <laughs> Not for the reasons you're thinking. <laughs> uh, right, which voice? Oh, um, so uh, I think King Henry II. And um, what did he do? What do you mean, what did he do? He was fucking king, just like me. Calm down, sir, there's no need to be antsy. I'm just doing my job. Lots of paperwork to be filled in. I have to get this questionnaire right, you know. It's not easy when all you've got is a quill pen and the office budgie's down to his last feather. Head office cutbacks, you see, so I don't want to make any errors. Muttering, I'll give you a head off his shoulders cutback, you bloody soil-eating bureaucrat. No, where were we? Ah, yes. So you had some jewellery given to you by your dad. Well, a lot of jewellery, did he say? <laughs> what are you implying? Oh, nothing, nothing. Just have to get down the details. What sort of jewellery was it then? Uh, necklaces? Earrings? Some of those charm bracelet things? No! It was a bloody crown jewels man! I'm king! Daddy was king! His daddy was king! Family business, is it? Of course it's a family business! We're the royal family! Surely you've heard of us. We're very big in England. Oh, I'm not based in England, sir. I'm not really uh, Dave from uh, Epping. Uh, we've all been outsourced to the hinterlands. But you're standing right in front of me. And a bloody long walk it was too. <laughs> yeah. But do you know, if I hadn't written this, I'd go ahead and buy a copy. <laughs> well, I get to. Uh, you can hear me a bit halfway down the page, you think. Ah, uh, yeah, I bought it. And a bloody long walk it was too. But we are a company that prides itself on our personal touch. So my handmaiden told me, you dirty dog. I misunderstood the term, sir. You can see why. It has hand made and on in the title. I actually thought it was in the job description too. Anyway, we're making good progress here. We've established that you're part of a family run concern, a family run through concern from the look of that young fellow being dragged away over there, and yet you haven't got this hand-me-down jewellery listed on your business insurance. Uh, is there a reason for that? Well, I, I didn't think I had to. Is this jewellery not yours, sir? Of course it's mine. I'm king. Look, I've got a crown on my head. Oh shit, well there's usually one there. 
I'm very well known. Ask anyone. Well, not the French. But look, I'm on coins and everything. So you are king five groat. No! Look on the other side. It's got my picture on. It's not much of a likeness, sir. That could be lots of people. Looks a bit like my bum boot, actually. We wondered if he had a job on the side, you know. Suddenly seems to have a few more tunics you'd expect an itinerant carrot cabbage balance in home. Must look into that. Anyway, let's press on. So let me fill in some of the bits we've covered. Tum -ti tum right. Uh, first name, uh, John. Last name, of England. Of England, thank you. No, 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 not of England. Of England. John of England. Sorry, sir, my oldie England is not good. Continues writing, or rather quilling. So, occupation, sir. King. Occupation, king. And uh, how long have you had this job, sir? Since 1199, and not one bloody day off in all that time. Most commendable, sir. I'm sure your employers are pleased. I don't have an employer. I'm king. Self-employed, are you? Well, sort of. I, I work for the people. What people? All the people. Well, not the poor ones, obviously. Or the ugly ones. Or people called Nigel. I don't know what it is. It's just something about that name. I have to turn the pages again, <clears throat> in case you're wondering what was going on there. So what do you do for these people, sir? Well, I rule them. And uh, what does that consist of, exactly? Oh, I tax them, I tell them what to do and how to live, I give their wives one on a whim, behead the moaners, the usual king stuff. And they're uh, happy with that, are they, sir? Yes. Or else. And is this company a private enterprise? In what way? Ah, uh, do you have any shareholders in you? Not the last time I looked. Although I did think this chair was a bit bumpy this morning. <laughs> right, sir, so, uh, back to the form. Uh, married? Yes. Oh, I'm surprised. Wife's name? Isabella of Angoulême. Not Isabella of England? No. Well, she is, but she also has her own name. Oh, very enlightened, sir. And if uh, anything should unfortunately happen to you, this lady will take over as queen. <laughs> no. <laughs> now, the circumstances of your loss, sir. Where are these jewels normally kept to? At the Tower of London. And um, what does he do? What does who do? This Mr. Tower of London. It's not a he, it's a building. Bloody big thing, you must have heard of it, it's on all the postcards. Sorry sir, what were you being John of England and your good wife being Isabella of Angoulême, you can see why I would think that Tower of London is also a person. And uh, you and your wife, uh, are you and your wife buildings in your spare time, sir? I messed that line up big proper, didn't I, eh? Of course we're not. I mean, I don't get any spare time, it's a 24-7 job. That's not a very high score. It's got a little question mark, so in case you wonder why I did that. I don't get it. I'll just put a bit in. That's not a very high score. What do you mean? 24-7. The other team must have really good bowlers. Lord help me. Look, can we get a move on? I've got serfs who aren't going to condemn themselves to torture, you know. Surf, you take your time, mate. <laughs> <clears throat> right, so these jewels, they were nice and safe in this Tower of London, I take it. Oh, yes. Guarded day and night they were, sometimes even longer. <laughs> 400 men manning the tower, yeah, lock, you know, the works. Uh, so, how did they go absent then? Well, I took them out and went to East Anglia with them, and you took them out? Why, pray tell? Um, uh, well, I, um, I thought they'd enjoy the trip. Can't stay locked up in a tower all your life, you know. Surf, I fucking have. <laughs> Shut up, you. Surf. I wouldn't mind a trip. I'm trying to do a surf's voice as well. There's three characters in there. I wouldn't mind a trip to East Anglia. I'm warning you. Pipe down. You've already got a pipe down there. Bloody Magna Carta. We should have kept the receipt. It'll be the worst for you if you don't shut it, Smelly. I'm in an important meeting here. It'll be the worst. Oh, I've been locked up in a dungeon for 32 years, upside down most of it, and you don't want to know what constipation's like in those circumstances. Woof. No light, running damp, lousy food, mice everywhere, breakfast, noon and night, there's mice for food, no air conditioning. Not unless I really mess this up. It'll be, I'll just do it in a normal voice, yeah? Okay, so, surf. It'll be the worst. That's not a normal voice. I've been locked up in a dungeon for 32 years, upside down for most of it, and you don't want to know what constipation is like in those circumstances. No light, running down, lousy food, mice everywhere, 
Breakfast, noon and night, there's mice for food. No air conditioning, not unless Olaf the tubster in the dungeon next door farts through the bars. What could be worse? But we'll turn the page and find out. Travel Lodge. Oh, fair cop will shut up. So back to the king. So, I should think so. <clears throat> Honestly, you give these people an... Well, nothing, but they still want more. So, as I was saying, I was... Going... <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind me. I was going to East Anglia for a sightseeing visit, and I thought it would be nice to let the crown jewels get some fresh air. Doesn't sound plausible, if you'll forgive me saying so. I won't. Uh, but why doesn't it sound plausible? Well, what sights could you hope to see in East Anglia? <gasps> I apologise most profusely, East Anglia. I'm sure you've got lots and lots and lots and lots of lovely sights. We never know because no one goes to the <laughs> I know I can't stop myself. I'm so sorry. Right, back to the king bit. Ah, um, uh, no, I've got it. I was the sight. I thought I'd go to East Anglia and let them all see me. Save them all coming to London to catch a glimpse of the man at the top. See what a nice guy I am? Upside down surf covered in crap. Yeah, you're all about the niceness. Ah, uh, well, I guess, and you thought they'd like to see you uh, in jewellery, sir? Well, you have to look a bit distinguished, especially when you've got a thousand weeks lying up to etch a selfie with you. <laughs> Quite. So, you're on the road, looking distinguished, you get to East Anglia, and then what? We got to the wash and decided to get across it. Why? We saw a chicken. You saw a chicken? What's that got to do with anything? Do you often have fowl make your travel arrangements for you? Uh, no, no, I was being funny. You know, uh, why did the chicken cross the road to get to the other side? I'm not sure where the funny comes in. Do all English monarchs sideline as comedians, sir? Only the cool ones. I do impressions as well. Of who? Of a man who can have you dragged up to Northumbria by the scrotum, by your scrotum at the nod of his head. Oh, uh, wait, I get it now. Get to the other side. Oh, that's hilarious. Ha, 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 your majesty. That's the way it's done. Anyway, there we are, halfway across the wash, when up comes this tidal wave. Oh, fuck me, I thought, and quickly looked around for my travelling companion, Surf. To save him? Oh, no, to stand on him. <laughs> Luckily, we just made it to the shore before he ran out of oxygen. Dry land, I exclaimed. Your valour and courage shall not go unnoticed. I smiled at my Surf's body as it floated off to France. Oh, dear. Oh, nay, t'was only or so, I thought. For there and upon, fear not, your majesty, I only blacked out, he called to me suddenly. Oh, I love a happy ending. I expect he would have too, but then a great big huge riptide came down, hooded him up in the air, and head first into a mighty oak. Embedded up to his ghoulies he was. I expect you gave him a dignified burial. Oh, we just set fire to the tree. He wanted to be cremated. Well, at least you observed his last wish. Oh, well, his last wish was that we got him down from the tree, but we were pressed for time. <sighs> oh, <laughs> of course, yeah, I forgot you were all about the niceness. Anyway, we need to <laughs> we need to get these forms finished. I've ready. <laughs> no, 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 no. Just a second. Two seconds. Beep, beep, beep. Of course. <laughs> I forgot. You're all about the niceness. Anyway, we need to get these forms finished. I've already used my last quill and I'm plucking this bloke short and curlies to make him <laughs> uh, so <laughs> I get The next line says so <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> oh. Okay, right, okay. Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> no, come on, come on. Of course. <laughs> I forgot you're all about the nonsense. <laughs> No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs>